Hey everybody. Today we're going to get to look at my Congo Tetra Spawn and swim back and forth looking beautiful while I talk about filtration. Um, a lot of you know I just finished cycling this tank in. I did it with fish in it. I did it very, very carefully. And I shot a lot of videos throughout the process. And in those videos I got a lot of comments. And there's some common themes that seem to be reoccurring uh, with people's understanding of how things like total dissolved solids, uh, in this case the organics, the nitrates, or the inorganics, the nitrites, and the um, ammonia. And I just I just want to discuss that a little bit. This is about the fourth time I've tried to, to shoot this video, and I've got about six different topics. That, you know, I don't know whether to do one video and try to cover everything or do a bunch of small videos because they all sort of tie together, so I'm just going to do what I normally do, which is point my head at the end of the thought, and we're going to go for it and see what happens on this go around. So one of the themes that I keep hearing over and over again is that external canister filters are nitrate traps. I hear that a lot, nitrate traps. I don't know what that means. I don't understand what you mean when you call an external canister filter a nitrate trap. Um, are you suggesting that there are somehow higher concentrations of nitrates in the canister filter water than there is in the tank water. If that's what you're suggesting, then you're wrong. Um, if you think that the nitrates accumulate somewhere in your tank as opposed to other places in your tank, you're just wrong. It's just, that's not how this works. Um, total dissolved solids are gonna be homogenous throughout your tank water. The water that's in your filter is flowing water. It's not stagnant. It's not collecting in there. It's flowing right on through and out the other end and right back into your tank. So any water that's currently in your filter box, you just wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, now it's in your tank because it's the same water that's just flowing through that filter. So you're not going to get any kind of accumulation of nitrates um, in your filter box. That's just that's a myth or something. It's a misunderstanding, a misconception. I'm not sure what you want to call that, but it's just not true. The other one I hear a lot is that you get nitrates trapped in your substrate, which again is not true. I've actually shot video where I do demonstrations of doing gravel vac, getting a bucket full of mucky, filthy gravel vac water, and it shows identical nitrates to the water that's in the tank, and that's because that's what you're going to see every time you do that. Um, the dissolved solids are evenly distributed throughout your tank. You cannot take a sample of water from one end of your tank and then take a sample of water from the other end of your tank uh, and have different nitrate levels. If you do, you got something really, really wrong with your tank. You, you got no water circulation. Even then, the process of diffusion would spread the nitrates evenly throughout the tank. So let's all just dismiss this idea that you've got concentrated nitrates somewhere in your tank, whether you think it's in the aquarium or, or the gravel or the, the filter box. Uh, it is not. So what I think this idea of a nitrate trap comes from, and I'll show you the filter I'm talking about here. It's uh, the one I use is basically, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's your basic Sun Sun 304B. It's the canister filter that pretty much everybody uses. Um, but all canister filters work the same way. You know, it's an external canister. It holds several gallons of water. Um, so what I think is going on, uh, what I think the people mean when they say that it's a nitrate trap is something I've discussed before about your filter. And this is where I want to actually start talking a little bit about what your filter does and the purpose of your filter. Because a lot of people seem to think the purpose of a filter is to pull the physical debris and detritus out of your water so that your water is nice and clear. That is a purpose of your filter, but it's not the purpose of your filter. It's not even the most important. In fact, it's the least important uh, thing that your filter actually does. And I'll get around to that in a minute. Where I think this idea of a nitrate trap comes from is the idea that when this detritus, we'll just say fish poop, gets pulled out of your tank and it goes into your filter. That's not being removed from your tank, nor is it being removed from your water. It's being removed from your site. And that is all it's being removed from. It is still in your tank. It is still in your water. So if you've got one of these external canister filters, they don't tend to get changed out very frequently. They hang on the backs, you know, you put a new pad in every time you do a water change because it's lickety split and it's easy as pie. Um, taking one of those canister filters apart and breaking all the trays down and having buckets to carry the stuff and restacking all the biomedia, that's a little more labor intensive. And I personally only do that about once a month. 
Now, what's going on is all of the stuff that's getting pulled out of my water, all of the waste products, the physical waste products, um, and they get trapped in that filter. So the, the debris and detritus is trapped in the filter, and as we know, that's where ammonia comes from. It's one of the sources of ammonia in your tank is the fact that water or the, the fact that these uh, organics are breaking down and they're breaking down into ammonia. So by not changing out your filter very frequently, you're just allowing all that stuff to sit in your filter and just continue to break down into your water. Now, this does not mean you are accumulating nitrates in your tank. It would be no different than if you just didn't have the filter on there at all. You were just swirling water around the tank and all your fish poop just settled to the bottom. It doesn't mean you're going to have a higher concentration of nitrates on the bottom of your tank. It just means that the fish poop's sitting on the bottom of your tank now, and that's where it's decomposing and breaking down and becoming ammonia, and then that gets broken down and turned into nitrite, which in turn gets broken down and turned into nitrate. It's all spread out all throughout your tank. It's not collected in your filter. The physical debris that breaks down and ultimately becomes nitrate is collected in your filter and it stays in your filter for longer periods of time than if you had a hang on the back filter for example so that could possibly be where people are getting this idea that a canister filter is a nitrate trap um it's a detritus trap and but but that's all it's it's there there's no accumulation of nitrates or nitrites or anything else in your filter uh, I guarantee we could take that filter apart right now and I could sample the water. Uh, in fact, next water change I do, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, see if we get a difference, because I've done the gravel vac experiment before and I got exactly the results as I was expecting. So we'll try it again next time and we'll do it with the canister filter and I'll take sample right out of the filter box and one out of the tank and we will compare them side by side and I will prove to you that the nitrates that are in your canister are identical to the nitrates that are in your fish tank. So, getting into what does your canister filter do if pulling the physical debris out of your tank is the least important thing it does. The chief thing your filter does is it moves water. It's a water circulation pump and that's the key thing your filter does. Now, a lot of different purposes are served by having the water circulating. Um, well, one of the very obvious ones is when the water is swirling around your tank and moving around your tank, it picks all that physical debris up. And that ton of poem, I swear he just chases them for fun. Um, it keeps the debris moving around your tank so that your filter head has a chance to pick it up and pull it out of your tank. So, of course, you know, we want our tanks to look clear. We don't want to see fish poop swirling around on the bottom. So that does serve a purpose by pulling it out of the water column, but it's not pulling it out of your tank, like I said. All it's doing is pulling it out of your line of sight. So the circulation from the filter does serve that purpose. Another purpose the filter serves by circulating the water is uh, gas exchange. Uh, the, the, the place that gas is exchanged in your tank is on the surface area of your water. If you've got an air stone that's in your tank, the vast majority of what that air stone is doing is causing the water in your tank to rise up from the bottom and spread out across the surface and then flow back down to the bottom of the tank. It's not the bubbles in the water that are putting the air in the water so much as it is the circulation on the surface area that's caused by the rising column of bubbles. So the circulation is key. You, you've got to keep that water moving around. You've got to keep those dissolved gases that are in the water evenly distributed so that there's not any oxygen dead zones in the tank. So the circulation is very important for that as well. The chief and key sole thing that you need more than anything in your tank is you need water circulation because the bio media in your tank lives in your filter for the most part. It does live on all the surface area in your tank, but you've got trays and trays of stuff in your filter box that are designed for, wow, he took a shot at uh, Otis Senkless. I've never seen him attempt to eat one of them before. And it looks like he's gonna do it again. Now these, this is a Tenopomo Cuterostra, and these are actually, well, there goes that Odo, so he's gonna be okay. Uh, they are piscivores. In the wild, that's what they do. They kind of lay low, looking up, and when some poor unsuspecting fish swims overhead, pow, uh, they're gone. 
So I've never seen him take a shot at an Odo before, and I see him chase the Congos around all the time, but that's no concern of mine because I don't really think he's doing it anything more than just, you know, instinctual, like a cat playing with yarn. Um, so anyway, getting back to the filter, the, you've got this um, bacteria that lives in your tank, and that bacteria is your biofiltration. The food source for that bacteria is the waste products from your fish. It's the nitrites, and it's the ammonia. And that can't go get food. It lives in your filter box or on the surface area of anything in your tank. So if the water is not moving around, you're not taking food rich water to this bacteria. This bacteria cannot go get its food. You have to take the food to the bacteria. And that's chiefly what your filter does. It moves water through your filter box and brings the ammonia and nitrite rich water across the biomedia and, and, and it exposes it to all that bacteria and allows the uh, ammonia and nitrites to be broken down into nitrates. So that's really the main thing your filter does in your tank, believe it or not. It's, it, biofiltration is what it really is doing. Uh, again, you know, the, the physical stuff that it's pulling out of the water, all it's, that's really doing is pulling it out of your site. It's not pulling it out of your tank. So for all the people that were giving me the suggestions that maybe the, uh, you know, the, the filter was collecting these nitrites or nitrates and that's why my tests were coming up funny or whatever, that's just really not how total dissolved solids work. It, it really isn't. And again, I, I've done that video already where I show you the gravel vac experiment and again next time I do a big filter change, uh, which will be coming up real soon behind me on the um, angelfish tank is going to need a good cleaning here soon and I'm going to go ahead and do the filter while I'm in there and we'll do that experiment. We'll test the uh, water right out of the filter box and if I'm wrong I'll be the first to tell you you know I, I got no problem admitting when I'm wrong that's how I learn um, but I'll bet you a dollar that I'm not wrong I'll bet it's exactly the same amount of nitrates in that canister filter as are in this tank. And on a final note one other idea that I came across several times while people were uh, offering me their opinion about what was going on in my tank during the cycling process. Um, a few people seem to think that a certain size tank needs to have a certain size bio load to match it or it wouldn't work. I had some people recommending that I put more fish in the tank because the amount of fish I had in the tank wasn't enough to generate the amounts of ammonia that a tank this size should be able to deal with. Uh, that That's a really, really mis guided statement all the way across the board. It just simply does not work that way. You cannot have an understocked tank. You can have an overstocked tank. Uh, that's something different. I'm not going to get into that now. Um, but as far as an understocked tank, that's just not possible. You can have a 125 gallon tank like this and you can have a guppy in it and the tank will find its balance. Remember, the waste products from the fish are the food for these nitrifying bacteria. These nitrifying bacteria are inhabitants in your tank. They're, they're members of your community. They work in symbiosis with the fish. The fish produce the waste. The bacteria eats the waste and so on and so forth. It's this circle that goes around. Well, it doesn't quite go around because the fish don't exactly consume the nitrates. Uh, however, like anything, they're just going to develop up into the levels where they've met their food source. You're not going to have a continuation of bacteria if you don't have food source for them. So if you have a single guppy swimming around in this tank, you're going to develop just enough biofiltration to handle the bio load. If you added more fish, then slowly but surely your bacterial load would increase uh, because there would be more food available for them and eventually they would achieve a stasis where they got to a point where they were matching the amount of food that was available and their numbers would sort of equilibrate and your tank would balance out again. If you added more fish, you'd grow more bacteria, the tank would balance itself out again. If you took some fish out, there'd be less food for the bacteria, some of the bacteria would die off, the tank would balance out again and it would find that stasis point where it's, I guess stasis isn't really the right word, uh, equilibrium, I guess, would be a better word. You, you, you have to have a balance between the amount of nitrifying bacteria you have and the amount of ammonia that's being produced in your tank. That's all subject to however much ammonia is being produced in your tank. You know, again, within limits, you know, you can overstock it. But this idea that I need to get up to a certain amount of ammonia in order for the tank to start working properly, 
uh, is also not true. I, you know, you, you can put two fish in a tank this size that are two inches long and you're not going to have issues with the nitrogen cycle. In fact, a tank like that, you know, so lightly stocked, you're not going to have any issues at all because you wouldn't even almost really need the filtration. Um, so that's, that's the second myth that I want to dispel, but I don't think too many people uh, are confused about that. I think most people understand that a tank will balance itself out for its own nitrogen cycle uh, or for the uh, level of uh, bio load that's in there. But I did have some people suggesting that I had this tank too lightly stocked to allow the bacteria to grow in in proper numbers or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, again, they, those, those statements were just so misguided. I'm not really sure where they were coming from because they just they, nothing about them was right. So keep all that stuff in mind. We'll continue this discussion as time goes on. Uh, and again, I will be doing that uh, video when I do the next water change. I'm going to do that experiment because now i got my own curiosity peaked. Uh, and I want to prove myself right or wrong either way. So thanks for watching this one. Hope that clarified things. Hope I didn't make it even more confusing. Uh, and go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any updates. I will see you on the next one. I thank you for watching this one.